All right, here's the basics. Simple, affordable air conditioning that runs in your van whether you're parked or you're on the road. It's a window unit air conditioner built into the van in a creative way so that you're vented outside, whether that's through the back doors, through holes in the floor, what I call the blue saloon has a toolbox stuck in the side and the air conditioner is, is inside that toolbox and vented to the outside. That works really, really well. Uh, the green solar van has a, has a wood box and ducting so fresh air comes in from underneath the van, goes across the hot coils, and then that heat is ducted back out through the underside of the van. That works really well. But here's the basics. You want to start with a 200 amp alternator. At least in my experience, when I had a smaller alternator on my van, I ran for a long time down the road so that batteries were together and I should have been charging the house battery. Since my air conditioner was using power faster than the smaller alternator was providing power, I ended up at a deficit. When I stopped for gas, I had to get a jump start before I could get going again. Your 200 amp alternator is gonna be factory wired through a fuse uh, on your T1N Sprinter, it's gonna be a fuse block right on the front of the battery. Other vehicles will be set up differently. You wanna run an additional separate fused wire off of that battery going to your battery isolator or your DC to DC charge adapter. From the battery isolator, we have a second battery connected. It goes down here to the house battery. Uh, you always want the outputs on your battery to be fused. Even though we're thinking of this as an input to the battery, it is the charge cable. When the battery isolator is switched off, this is still a live line, so you want a fuse right here. Typically, your battery isolator is gonna need a trigger. Some DC to DC chargers will just sense the voltage on this line and know to open up the connection between the two. Uh, with my battery isolators that I'm familiar with, they need a trigger. So I have the trigger wire set to a switch on the dashboard so I can turn it on and off as I desire if, if my battery is full. Uh, next time my van is stopped, I'll turn that off so I'm not constantly pushing voltage at that uh, house battery. That switch on the dashboard is powered by Terminal D+. Plus. Terminal D+, plus in our Sprinter vans, is uh, 12 volts positive while the engine is running. It will not give you 12 volts while the key is on, which is very important because if your battery isolator comes on with the key being turned on and your house battery is dead, as soon as you turn that key on, your starter battery is gonna to try to charge your house battery and maybe not give you enough juice to start the van. You definitely uh, do not want this to come on with the ignition key. You want it to triggered so that it doesn't come on until the van starts. Again, that may be different with your battery to battery charger. Check with the installation on that. We have our alternator, our starter battery, our battery isolator, terminal D. Get back to that switch a little bit. You do not want to flip that switch when you're going down the highway. When your alternator is under a heavy load, you don't want to suddenly turn it off. I only flip this switch when the van is stopped. If I've been driving for a long time, my battery, my house battery is full, up to 400 amp hours. Uh, next time I'm stopped for gas or a pit stop, I'll turn that switch off. Same goes for turning it back on. I don't want to just flip that switch on while we're going down the road because all of a sudden that's going to put a heavy draw on the alternator. And we don't want a sudden change of voltage either way on the alternator. House battery is wired to a couple of different things. First of all, you're going to want to go out to all of your 12 volt accessories. I recommend a fuse box of some sort, a uh, fuse panel, so that you can split off and have separate fuse to your fans, separate fuse to your cigarette lighters, pardon me, your 12 volt outlets, a separate fuse to your USB circuits. Uh, then we also have a heavy gauge wire going out to the inverter. The size of your inverter will dictate the size of that wire. That inverter puts out house current, 120 volts, which could go directly to your air conditioner, but then your air conditioner is only gonna run when your inverter is on. So I have it set to an auto switch. You'll see that later in the video. There's a little uh, automatically switching, whichever source, whether it's my shore power plug, if it has power, when this one doesn't, this will automatically flip over and connect my van to the shore power. If the shore power does not have power, I turn on the inverter, the switch flips over to grab power from the inverter. If they're both on at the same time, it's whoever came first. From the shore power plug, you want to split off a line and go to a, a 12 volt battery charger that charges your house battery. 
The reason for that split being here is you never want to create a loop. You don't want to plug your battery charger in up here because although that'll work when you're plugged into shore power, uh, it will also then be trying to charge the battery when you're plugged into the inverter power. So we don't want to do that, obviously. Split your shore power plug. It goes two places. It goes to the auto switch and it goes to the battery charger. Different color surroundings, different color plugs to, to identify that one wall plate is, hey, this one isn't hot unless we're plugged into shore power. If you have a battery charger that you just want to plug in, that's a good way to do it. Otherwise, uh, if, if you're comfortable with it, cut the plug off and just hardwire it in right to the shore power. Your shore power pedestal should always be GFI equipped. Your garage outlets that you might plug your van into should always be GFI equipped. Gee, I re recommend putting a GFI outlet as the first outlet in your in your van. This one as well could be GFI down here for just the 12 volt charger. Be a good place to plug in your expensive laptop charger and then it's only going to work when you're on shore power. Uh, so GFI should be there, GFI should be here. Plug into the air conditioner or run it off of the, uh, again we can cut the plug off and hardwire it in, but if you do that make sure you're plugging into the load side not the line side so that your air conditioner is GFI protected. From that outlet, you can run from the, from the load side, run out and put more outlets around your van wherever you want to. But here's an important part about the air conditioner. This line represents where the air conditioner would sit in a window at your apartment. You want everything this side of that line to be inside your van's living space. In the blue saloon that you'll see later, the whole thing is actually inside the van. But this much of it is in a toolbox that's stuck in the side of the van and vented to the outside. So none of this air mingles with this air. You want your warm air coming into the face, face of the air conditioner and your cold air coming out the face of the air conditioner. I shouldn't call that warm. You want your room air going into the air conditioner, circulating across the cold coils and coming back out as cold air into the room. The back side of your air conditioner, you don't want that air mingling. That is, That gets warm back there. You want it vented to the outside, of course. I see a lot of people doing that. Or what I see a lot of people failing to do is give that a fresh air intake. It needs to have a fresh air intake uh, to the inside of the box here so that the air that's being pushed across that hot coil and out isn't drawing air out of your living compartment. If you're constantly drawing air out of your living compartment to go across these warmer coils and out the window, like I've seen with portable units, somewhere your van is constantly pulling fresh air in. Usually it's going to do that across the vents at your dashboard because they're always open. That's the hottest place in the world to be drawing air from. So if this is underneath the bed, you've got warm air drawing from your dash vents all the way through the van before it gets chilled and cold air is going into the air conditioner and vented out across the coils. Fuses. Anywhere you've got a positive battery terminal, fuse it, fuse it, fuse it, fuse it, fuse it. AC coming out of here, if your inverter doesn't have a breaker built in, put a breaker on it. If you can't, can't get a breaker into your environment, a breaker box is kind of big with the little breakers. Uh, they do sell wall plates like this with the old penny fuses in them. If you don't know what I mean by a penny fuse, Ask your grandpa. The, when the fuse is blue, they were just the right size. You could stick a penny in there, connect the circuit. It wasn't a fuse anymore, but the lights came back on. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. This van, the Blue Saloon, is my daily driver. It has a 200 amp alternator, a 3500 watt inverter, and a 5000 BTU air conditioner but I turned on the air conditioner about noon. Let's see how it's doing. The air conditioner works well built into the wall like that. There's a toolbox on the outside of the van that protrudes inside, and that's what that whole cabinet is all about. It's just clad in cedar there to make it look, well, make it look less like the bottom side of a toolbox, to be honest. Outside the van, we have a toolbox. And it came to be by accident. Somebody backed into me and stuck a big hole in the truck. Body shop wanted a small fortune to replace the rear quarter panel. $65 bought a toolbox, cut the whole beggar, 
stuck it in there. About a year later, I realized I wasn't using it as a toolbox. But I could put an air conditioner in it and stuff my Honda generator in there as well as the extended run fuel can. But I prefer the Westinghouse generator. It's on like that. You can see there's a lock there. There's a lock there to lock it to the hitch as well all the way around the generator, so I'm absolutely positive it's never gonna fall off. It's running right now off of shore power. Uh, we are plugged in. My battery monitor up here is showing me, uh, and we're charging at six amps at the moment and running air conditioner at the same time. Right now we're running on shore power. But that's not my only option. Underneath what I call the aquarium stand here, we do have a 3500 watt inverter. It's not a great one, but it is pure sine wave and it does a pretty decent job. Or at least it's worked for me for uh, about a year, a little bit more. I had a 1500 watt inverter that was not pure sine, it was modified sine wave. And it worked, but when I changed to pure sine wave, I sure noticed a difference in how much cold I could put out. Go up here behind the driver's seat and we will turn on the inverter. Now we're still running on house shore power. That is my automatic switch over. So here when I pull the plug on the shore power, it cuts over just that quick. Shore power is right here at the trailer hitch. So it's just a short cord to the Westinghouse generator. And you can see we're pulling 55 amps at 12 volts right now. So that 400 amp power battery isn't gonna last forever. It's still a balmy 93 degrees outside at six o'clock in the evening on this late July in Florida. Been driving all day with the air conditioner running. So we've kept it pretty cool. 400 amp power battery is fully charged, showing 399 sitting idle here we'll, we're still charging just a tiny bit on the battery or at least showing a charge even though it's completely full has been for a while so let's turn the truck off at six o'clock in the evening and see how long we can maintain a comfortable temperature without that battery dying all in all it was another disappointing test started with a cool van and a full battery and it died a little after midnight. So six hours of air conditioning is fine. It's 99 degrees outside again today. It was warmer than this yesterday, same time. Sun wasn't down at six o'clock. If I had driven well into the night and then stopped to sleep at midnight as I normally would trying to get somewhere, uh, obviously the air conditioner would have kept me plenty cool until I woke up and got ready to drive again. But as far as camping for the weekend, 400 amp hour battery just not going to get you from dinner time till breakfast with air conditioning in Florida. Maybe it would in Minnesota. That's going to be factory wired to a fuse block on the front of your son of a bitch and bugs bit me.